I think uh, Dr. Grube sir is ready waiting patiently. Oh, I think you can start uh, the session, uh, Dr. Sushil. We'll keep discussing. Sorry to intervene. Uh, over to you. Wonderful. Uh, thank you, Srinivas. And, uh, you know, I think without further ado, we'll go over to uh, Dr. Grube and his team. Uh, wonderful friend and colleague. And, and Dr. Grube doesn't need an introduction, but has really been the one of the key pioneers in, in TAVR. From yeah. Oh, there. Wonderful. Okay, now yeah. we have your sound back. Perfect. So, Sushil, thank you very much for your very kind words. And I actually have two reasons to be very happy and very proud. As you can see, it's a little bit of a different environment. Uh, there's one person though behind me, Hendrik, who, uh, who you know from Bonn, he, he changed now to Mainz. And this is, as you know, one of the most experienced centers in Germany with an incredible caseload. And uh, next to me or next to Hendrik is Stefan uh, von Badelim. He's already working. And Martin Geyer, who is the, uh, the operator, a very young, talented uh, physician. And I have the privilege and honor to be here, um, moderate the case a little bit. I have to... I have to say, though, that, you know, there was initially a young low risk patient by cuspid. Unfortunately, uh, this patient, uh, before we could go live, um, we uh, the patient turned over to be a little bit unstable and uh, Hendrik had to operate on him. But we had uh, a backup case, which we're showing now, uh, hopefully a very interesting case because there are some important points to discuss. Uh, and maybe Stefan, uh, maybe Stefan or, uh, or Martin, he's, he's working. So Stefan, uh, yeah. first of all, thank you very much for having me. Okay. Hendrik, thank you much for having me. Maybe you can um, introduce the other uh, members of the team. Yes, thank you very much. Severe, um, actually, hypertrophy of the left ventricle. Uh, you see his six-minute walk test is severely reduced. And um, um, the BNP levels elevated. His year score two, even though being 93, is in the immediate risk score level. So next slide, please. Kannst du bitte was sagen, Frau Brümmer? Geht's noch nicht? Um, so you see here the echocardiography, you can appreciate that we have a two centimeter thick septal wall, the LV ejection fraction is normal, we face a severe aortic stenosis, but the gradients are lower, you see the Pmax, Pmean values from echocardiography, but the index less velocity ratio is significant with 0.25 according to the guidelines. Uh, even in this old gentleman, the SPAP was only mildly elevated with uh, 35 millimeters mercury. Next slide. So what do we face when we did the coronary angio in this old uh, gentleman? You see, we have a very nice right coronary artery, but we had and faced a left main stenosis at the distal portion. And this has been treated before. So next slide. So the discussion in the heart team was in favor of a PCI of left main plus a stage tower because of the highly elevated age. Uh, the left main was treated, as you can see here, with two Everolimus um, uh, stents. Next slide. So now we come into the discussion, Eberhard, and uh, we, we, we've seen these uh, images before, Hendrik. Uh, so we have a, a tricuspid valve with an, um, a parameter of uh, approximately uh, 79 um, and an area of around uh, 490 uh, millimeters square. So the average to actually diameter is around uh, 25 uh, millimeters. Uh, the coronary access is very favorable also for a superannular a self expanding valve. So we have a left and the right main with 16 millimeters across the annular level. Next slide. And the sinus is also, as uh, Martin put it, big enough. We see we had a favorable for this old patient, a favorable femoral access situation that we used. The marker catheter is coming from the right radial artery. So we have only uh, one puncture from the uh, right groin and we have a pacemaker possibility from above. You can nicely see the heavily calcified situation in the left main and also in the circumflex. And you can see here um, the annular level uh, that is calcified. The excess side is very favorable. So we're far across uh, five millimeters and even uh, over six millimeters. So next slide. 
We will discuss together with Eberhard and Henrik, of course, uh, what kind of new implementation techniques we can use and uh, to, to enable this, it is important not only to use the traditional uh, three cusp technique, which is shown on the left hand side, which is an LAO uh, 17 with a caudal 17, which may go further to the LAO when the wire is in. We have no horizontal anatomy, which is very, very favorable actually for the self expanding valve. And on the right hand side, Eberhard, we see the new cusp overlay technique that has been nicely described also from New York uh, and with Gilbert Tang. And we see that we typically go slightly into an REO position. And this is like a textbook candidate, actually, because he's really on a caudal only with a slight REO projection. And it's very important to take these additional views. Next slide. So for the risk analysis, we also look, of course, for the uh, movement we're able to do with the calcified valve leaflets. We're safe for the coronaries, and we have a very favorable QRS width of only 96 uh, milliseconds in a very old patient. So I think uh, this uh, looks very nice. We see a member in the septum that is approximately 3.3 millimeters. Next slide. So. The therapy was initiated to use the very new and 2021 uh, generation of the Medtronic Evolute platform and the iteration of the Evolute Pro uh, switched to the Evolute Pro Plus, which will take over actually the sealed proportion to all valve sizes. So what we see here is that we have a high variability of sizes available to treat. So we can treat an analyst from 18 to 30 millimeters. And you can see that with this new platform, we also have a seal capability in the largest 34 millimeter uh, device. Henrik, what do you think of these uh, developments? I think it's uh, very favorable to treat a lot of patients, especially also the North European uh, patient type, which rather goes into the 29, 34 range. Yeah, that's a major advantage. And uh, together with the advantages, now the introducer sheets come back to sh uh, smaller sizes so we mm -hmm. can treat vessels uh, five millimeter in width. That's uh, quite a step forward, I would say. Ebert, what do you think? Yeah, I think that's, that's, an, important, uh, that's an important development, covering uh, an annular size from 18 to 30 millimeters. Uh, and excluding the 34 millimeter, you have a 14 equivalent uh, sheath size. So it basically continues uh, a, a favorable access, even though this patient had a good access, as you mentioned, Stefan, uh, it's still good to reduce the vascular complications. Um, I think what will be discussed while we do the, the case is the new technique. And, um, and uh, now I, it's, it's, uh, I, I know that you're, you, that, that, that you're there, Sushil, and I think I heard yes. Vinny also. Um, so we have a great group of people about from our Indian friends uh, that we, you know, have a lot of discuss here because it's a low flow, low gradient patient. Um, and, uh, and obviously, if we look at the at the size, I think the team decided to uh, use a 29 millimeter valve. Uh, which is very appropriate here for a 78 perimeter, if I'm not mistaken. 79, the, yeah. Yeah, 79. And uh, the calcium, the calcium load is moderate to severe. As you can see, the the the, uh, the take of the coronaries is favorable. So we concentrate basically on uh, on the on the technique of of, uh, of of implant, which is new to many. Uh, we have to get used to it. The teams actually that are working every day. They're quite familiar with this, but I think we can discuss this and maybe uh, right now. Can if I ask a couple of quick questions? Exactly. Yeah, go ahead. So, so uh, I have uh, Saurabh on the line and Srinivas and uh, Sanjay and, and I think a couple others. So um, the, the, there's a, this is a great case. I, you know, I, I, it's sort of a patient on the old, older end, um, but the low flow, low gradient and the guidelines have updated. And, and I think that that's an important consideration. These are patients that are often under recognized uh, as severe AS. Um, and, and there are probably other concomitant pathologies like amyloid. So, you know, how do you convince yourself that it's severe AS? How does, you know, uh, Stefan or Hendrik or Eberhard or yep. others, you know, what would work up? I mean, to make that distinction. 
I think the index list uh, velocity range is a very good start uh, to differentiate uh, the need versus the non-need. But we also know, and we'll see more trials on this, uh, that also the low flow uh, gradients, especially in very stiff ventricles and also in moderately to reduce ejection fraction, have a mortality benefit if you really reduce the afterload by uh, taking off uh, even a three meters per second or more uh, actually resistance uh, to, to the outflow of the ventricle. Yeah. So, so these patients do better. And we have meta-analysis just recently of six and a half thousand patients. We have the circulation papers by the centers in, in the Netherlands that covered more than 300 patients. I think there is ongoing evidence and we will see also trials in the future uh, going for the low flow patients, especially in reduced uh, in reduced ejection fraction that they may have a mortality and hospitalization benefit. But this is to be shown in randomized trials, which will be ongoing next year. But I think uh, the point that, that, that Sushil is raising, uh, you know, with a low gradient, um, uh, you know, this, by the way, this patient is, is elderly, as you know, 90, uh, but he's still very active. And uh, so you can, you know, we, we assume that once he's um, he's practicing his activities, daily activities, that the gradient situation is is, is relevant, and I think um, you can do it in many ways to 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 uh, to, to test and to uh, define low flow, low gradient. It is an ongoing it is an ongoing discussion, as you very well know, Sushil. Um, you know, would you actually at this age, Hendrik? I think personally, I think this is a good tower case, but. We still have uh, to discuss whether there is a surgical option here also. Just a word on this? No, in this case, no, actually. <laughs> so that's no, the clear answer. No word. No. Um, no. But you know, whenever you're in doubt about the low flow, low gradient, I mean, the degree of calcification in this case really gives the last hint you need, maybe. So if you see calcified valve like this, then the decision point is much easier to take, I think. Yeah. Andrew, can so, I, in the last uh, session, uh, something came up. Let's say this patient was 63. Right, uh, so I represented mm. similar patients um, in the lifetime management. Have you, you know, what do you, what do you think about the strategy of even in a fifty-five-year-old or or someone doing TAVR first, with the idea that you're going to go back and take this valve out later? As a, as a, on the surgical side, how do you feel about that strategy of saying, okay, mm. in terms of sequencing, do TAVR, then surgery, then TAVR again? Can I just before Hendrik answers more with more competence than me? I just thought I heard a word that uh, it is easy to take a, an ingrown valve out. I have seen cases that is the opposite, and particularly, I mean, uh, particularly the core valve. Um, if you if you put if you implant a core valve in a 65, which by the way is not covered by any any guidelines and any reasonable reasonable data. Um, but suppose you do, and the, the, the and, and you want to explant it. This is not such an easy case, uh, be, uh, and, and Hendrik, of course, can talk more about that. But it's an ingrown of of a tube, and uh, you might actually end up with the with a root replacement. Hendrik, would you comment on that, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Tava first. It's been discussed many times. Um, I think we have to look at the anatomy first. It must be a very good Tava candidate. And there are some scenarios where I could imagine that this is the way to go. If you have a very small aneurysm, by the way, where you know that implanting a surgical valve in a center that's not capable of doing root enlargement ends up with patient prosthesis mismatch. And okay. in this such a case, I would definitely opt for TAVA first because then you have the lowest gradients possible, maybe even the best durability of the valve. So it's, it's not only looking at patient age and risk, it's more looking on anatomy, I would think, and then pick the perfect valve for that particular uh, patient. So there are many questions, but, you know, rather draw a line beneath it, I think surgery first in the younger ones is still a valid concept, but we, as surgeons we have to keep up and implant the correct valves, uh, so the ones that are good uh, um, uh, uh, candidates for a later valve and valve procedure. And we have to implant large valves and do root enlargements. If that's possible, then I would opt for surgery first. Yeah, I think, Sushil, and, and we've discussed this. If, if I was 65 of 60, I would not start with TAVR unless there's a reason not to do surgery. I would start with surgery and a root enlargement, not, 
you know, implant a small valve, which we know will be a problem later. But I would go if at young age, and that's actually recommended also, uh, I would start with surgery and encourage the, uh, the surgeon to do a root enlargement. Uh, the, you know, there has been a discussion about root enlargements quite a bit uh, at TVT. I understand this is more technique, it's more time, it's more risk, needs more experience, all of that. But if you look at lifetime management of these patients, I think we should strive to, uh, to do the root enlargement if there is a small valve. But at that age, I would definitely go for surgery. Double zero, Felix. So the, okay. uh, the other question uh, in this case is great, highlights a lot of the issues, so the coronary disease. Um, if this yeah. was a sapien, is part of the decision about fixing the coronaries that the access may be more difficult with the core valve, or if this was a sapien, you would have still fixed the coronaries first, or is there a scenario where you do the valve first? Stefan, you, you made a point. Uh, that so was so we, we, we definitely do, in the majority of cases, a staged procedure. Uh, this is because both the contrast dye exposure and the result is known. We would always try to revascularize the patient first and then go into a separate procedure and keep both procedures short and keep both procedures also conscious. So this would be my preferred approach, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I. You know, there are certain patients where we've, where we've deferred coronary revascularization. It, in some selected population, you yeah. know, our heart team has felt that actually TAVR is the lower risk of the two yeah. options and let's just TAVR <laughs> them first. That is, that is true. It, it also exactly. depends certainly if you have risks for ischemia, if you have the need for rapid pacing or just for past pacing, etc. So there are many variables that also go into the equation. So it's yeah. not, not mm -hmm. it's just a general tendency, but it's never 100%, of course. Yeah, but I think what, what you said, Stefan, um, it is basically a risk evaluation. You don't want to add another risk. If you can be reasonably sure that fixing the coronaries is doable with low complication rates, then I probably think there's a good reason to do it. If there's any risk involved that might uh, prohibit you from moving, uh, from, uh, from moving forward so in, a, cool. in a given yeah. coronary yeah. case yeah. with TAVR, then I think a stage procedure is also an option. I think we're ready to go. Is this correct, Yeah, we, Martin? we just test the valve. So what we did before is uh, the first thing is uh, doing the um, the excess, that's the safety excess with the realization and x-ray for doing the primary excess with a distal safety sheath. And we did the, um, uh, we, we crossed the valve with a straight terumo wire and switched over long terumo and then we did already the marker pigtail via the radial side. So now we checking the valve for correct loading. And uh, Sushil, maybe you can, uh, you, or whoever is, is there can, uh, can comment on the, on the overlay technique, or overlap technique, which is quite different. If I may just say the two or three key points, I'm sorry, the, the two key points are uh, that uh, moving away from the traditional coplanar view, you try to overlap the, um, the right and the left uh, and separate the non in order to, um, uh, to clearly define the membrane septum, which we know is the target uh, for uh, conduction disturbances. That's number one. Number two, is the deployment technique. Uh, we try not to go into the ventricle, classic way, pull back, uh, because we try to stay away from it. So we start high, hopefully. We start high and let the valve move down in order to uh, not to, you know, get in contact with the membrane septum. And number three, um, we try to get the, uh, the head marker over uh, into the outer curve. But most importantly, um, uh, we want to make sure that, you know, this patient doesn't have any, any conduction disturbance. The other thing that I would like to mention here, because coronary, I mean, commissural alignment at, in this particular age group is probably not a, a major thing, but we are aware of it now in younger patients, not only looking at cusp overlay to reduce, um, to reduce conduction disturbances and 
uh, a foreseeable um, a discharge in one day, um, but also have commercial alignment, which is to say you align the prosthesis with the native valve in order to guarantee coronary access. So now, Can go I ahead, Sushil. Can I ask a quick question? Um, so you, it looks like you're using a safari wire or a confident match. Yes. Yeah. So there's just two camps about the pre-shape versus a Lunderquist. Some people uh, yeah. are very adamant. I, don't, I use a safari, but there, yeah. I know there's camps that are very adamant about Lunderquist. Do you want to comment on that? Or? Yeah. So, so he, we've discussed this, obviously, because um, uh, that's a very good point. Uh, I think, um, I, I shouldn't say Medtronic recommends, but they actually do uh, try to recommend the Lunderquist because uh -huh. it, the curved Lunderquist, uh -huh. because it's supposed to give okay. good and better support. Um, you know, it is, it is what you're used to. I personally use the Lunderquist, the curved Lunderquist, because um, it gives me great support and uh, kind of um, controls the valve movement a little better than the Safari. Well, let's see um, how we do. The other question here is uh, pre-dilatation or not, given the calcification, um, I think the team decided not to pre-dilate. Is that correct? That is correct. So, yeah, so we'll try to implanting the valve already. To do that I just wanted to mention yeah. it. So, so Stefan, what scenario would you pre-dilate? Is it by cuspids only or? Um, oh, yes. So, 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 so we just want to show you here the introduction technique that you see for the curvature and for the new implantation technique where the flush port here is at three o'clock. For alignment. For commercial alignment, for, yes. It's good. And yeah. the head markers on the outer curvature. You see the, the head markers there? For now, you see it's a steep angle, but we're getting across nicely. Slightly LAO. Yes. And you see, we're now diving into the valve. Try not to go into no, too deeply. No, no, no. We, so basically, the marker band should be at the level of the pigtail. So do you do what the, so some people have advocated putting the marker band at the middle of the pigtail and letting the valve come down. Is that exactly your that's correct. Right. That's, exactly. The, that's the approach. And hopefully we can prove our point by looking at the EKG afterwards, right? So we have two settings here. One is slightly REO he is now going into this overlay technique, which is approximately four to six degrees REO and which is then caudal, as you can see. And this gives us, as you see nicely, the non coronary cusp on the left hand side of the image. And we have an overlay of both the right coronary and left coronary on the right hand side. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and uh, importantly, I mean, uh, you know, the deployment should be fairly slow. So we see. We see how things are going, but uh, that's an important step that you don't dive into the ventricle and let the valve go down. Okay, so we can do a, an angiography. The root shot. That's connected. Which uh, right now no, it's, it's doesn't open. show. Oh, okay. Do it again. <laughs> Typical pitfall. Very good. Okay, that's okay. excellent. See this, uh, Sushil? Yes, yes, that's great. So you have the marker band sort of in the middle of the pigtail. Correct. Yes. As close to the base as possible in the non. Correct. And the right and left are overlapped here. Yeah. Right. Okay. Absolutely. The the wire is, I think, in good position. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. we do similar. We use the Lunderquist in sort of a horizontal aorta or something. Yes. To help us. Definitely. Back. But as I said, this is no horizontal aorta, of course, in this case, you can nicely appreciate that uh, with a very nice position of the of the system. Okay, so we will take a pacing of uh, Frau Professor Brimmerich, will we 100 uh, pacing name, 100 BPM? Controlled pacing now. What meter are you doing for that? We're doing 100, 100. Okay. Just to, to make sure we have no extra beats. And okay. uh, uh -huh. so while can, they're deploying. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, protection, uh, the question uh, it didn't come up. Um, as you know, here it's, a, it's an issue. Okay. He, I don't think he's at high risk for, for uh, using protection. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I would, de I would definitely do it in bicuspids, obviously, in a heavy calcium load. 
hopefully yeah, we will go ahead in India, for is uh, zero protection is not available, so it's not not used. But it, it, it's an important point. I mean, we do it routinely, but reimbursement's not as much of an issue here as it is yeah. in other regions. So, I think that's the challenge. But yeah, I, you see how I see how slow you guys are opening. Yes. I think that's, yeah. that's a great time. I like that very much. Yeah. Very difficult for Stefan. He has a lot of temperament, as you know. Yeah, but but I'm I'm also coming from AV Val, so they were always very slow. But one one bite only, you know. <laughs> so Sheila, you're you're the same, I hope. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. So yeah. see, the valve does not. It, it's very nice. Yeah. It's very nice. It stays and there. And Martin does a great job in keeping the height. It's it's always a little pushing, and a different different power for that okay. now it's slightly flaring we try to connect it to the cusp see time perfect okay see how how it's coming to the coronary cusps yeah it's off mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, but that that's, was... that's, uh, that's just uh, something that uh, is not a problem here yeah. in this case, because we really want to go high. So maybe he starts a little bit slow, a little bit lower. And perhaps we increase the frequency. The blood pressure was quite high in this patient, yes, yeah. to be honest, I in the beginning. So when you... uh, yeah, we have to go higher also with the, uh, with the pacing. Yeah, we're okay. still bouncing a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, gleich, gleich, wenn wir drin sind. Ich sage es an nochmal. Ja. Once you get in, once you get in contact also with the valve, also Druck kann ruhig sein. Also wenn wir da ein bisschen, then you know it start bouncing and the bouncing is yeah. is really something that kind of pushes the valve up a little bit. I think that's important, especially for the 23s. I've taken to, you know, when I when it starts engaging at the uh, just below the valve, right. increase the pacing to 140, Correct. 160 yes. briefly, just to right. hold position. Yeah. And as he is uh, 93, we're, we're yeah. a little bit reluctant, but I, I think you're totally right. And this is also the measurement that we take now. Okay, I'm going to some. Come, Druck is super, Frau Bremerich. A very mm -hmm. nice pressure. Pressure is good. And you pace, please, to start pacing with 120. We can go up in the second half of the implant with 120, and then sagen wir Ihnen Bescheid nochmal für Erhöhung auf 140 oder so. Aber so ist gut, so ist gut. We have 80. So yeah. that's 120 now, a little yeah. higher than before. Yeah. But when again, this is this Time. is a good movement. Time. Time. When it starts bouncing, then I think it's good. Yeah. Pressure Time. is Time. very Time. good. Time. 120. Time. Very slow. He's going slow, as you see. Yeah. And your Looking goal forward. is about two to three below. Is that correct? Yes, or? that's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. It is not heavily calcified. So you see, it was good not to predilate in this case. Uh, actually, this also gives us the same impression. Is it Druck gegen Druck noch runter? Müssen bisschen mehr gerücken. Ja, so ist gut. It's a bisschen höher. Wir haben der Druck ist. 100, genau, ein bisschen höher, Pace noch, 20, 140, danke. So we go to 140 beats per minute. Ah, die Bewegung ist jetzt schlecht, bisschen, bisschen, bisschen sedieren. Ganz ruhig liegen bleiben. Okay, ich mach weiter. Halt gegen, halt gegen, ich mach auf, ja? Halt schneller. Ja, 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 alles gut. Gegenhalten. Patient wants to go. <laughs> Patient wants to be <laughs> already <laughs> discharged. Is I go. Is aus? Okay. Is aus? Okay. Nine minutes. Oh, that might be good. Yeah. Okay. So we switch Aufnahme. now to uh, Aufnahme to LAO. LAO. Looks yeah, perfect. Yeah. Very good. We switch over to fifteen, fifteen, or twenty. Something like this. See that, Sushil, this is now important okay. that you know yeah. where the projection, uh, the image intensifier to goes to. And the valve looks good. Very good. Perfect. You see, and we, we got a much higher, higher situation also on the left coronary. Looks perfect for a conscious patient that was even moving. So uh, we have a very nice situation. Yeah, he wants to go home already tomorrow. So uh, he's talking with us. Uh, on his discharge date.
Yeah. And, and, and I think one thing yeah. I would emphasize, as, as you did here, again, patient okay. 93. Yeah. There, mm -hmm. There's this goal that people have about being, you know, the cusp overlap technique doesn't mean going to zero, right? Yes. No. Uh, and I think that's an important consideration because that gets out there and everyone's like, it has to be a zero implant. It doesn't need to be zero. Yeah. It's, it's in the, No, two, three. You know, yeah, two, three but is, you see, is the goal. Yeah, exactly. But the two three in cusp overlay is not the two three in uh, the coplanar of view. That's Correct. the most important point, you know. Yeah. It's so here you can see. I mean, the beauty here is when you try to do this, and it bounces. You can, you know, uh, you can uh, close the valve again and and and, and, and re reposition it. And it looks like the valve expanded nicely as well. Yes. So. Yeah. No, we're very happy, Sushil, with the uh, with the overall implant. And this is a conscious patient who is nicely talking to us, who is already negotiating his discharge <laughs> minutes, actually. So he wants to go home tomorrow. And we haven't seen these, this performance, you know, 10 years, 15 years ago. So I think it's, it's wonderful, you know. Those were times with snaring, other things. This is all gone. It's much more controlled. And I think it's very beneficial for this age group. Which is... Actually, also the, the one day discharge, which is proven in the TVT registry, as you well know, and also in the optimized study and in the report of the of the individual centers that reported on the on the overlay that you that the discharge is really one day, which is very important in many areas of the world here in Germany, as you know, it is not such a big deal because, you know, as you know, we need to keep the patient in the, in the hospital at least uh, for some t for some days. Anyway, only four, only four days now. So yeah. so even Germany has come down for a total length of stay from nine days down to four days uh, for those tougher patients, irrespective of age. And we know that the oldest patient actually treated here in Mainz was 101 years old. You know, and even with 99, we have long term survivors of five years after Tabor, which shows you that you're taking away a significant risk factor actually for mortality. I want you to see that I'm holding the wire. I do something, mm -hmm. Sushi. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it well, we can know, always I'm increase still there. this. We can always increase this. <laughs> uh, we've just put the wire out. Tomorrow Ebert is on call, actually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so alles gut. Die neue Klappe so, ist drin, es funktioniert schon alles. So uh, you can so, see can I ask the, a question? Um, so sure. one of the things that we've been they've been pushing I've been pushed to do, and the, the group here has pushed us, uh, is if the PR is normal, I mean, this is an AFib patient, I think, but if the PR is normal and a narrow QRS, yes. we've been doing the pacer from the groin, and if the membrane septum is four, we you know, do the pacer from the groin, do a quick EKG after, and pull the pacer at the end. It, uh, we it we, we always do that. that point. Do you guys always do that routinely? Uh, well, we, we, we tend to do the pacer from the groin, especially okay, if the pacer is okay, low risk. One? for a pacing uh, situation and if the patient has a pacemaker in place. Actually, we, we use often a jugular approach because this is easier for those patients who are borderline very old to actually do this um, and to have the possibility for one or two days uh, to, to get a pacer in quite rapidly. We always pull the pacer in the hybrid OR. So mm -hmm. it's always an early, uh, we don't leave the pacer in. So, so it looks very fine. Can you, uh, Regie, can you put the pressure curves, the das EKG und Drucksignal bitte in die Übertragung? So now you see, I think a perfect result, Sushil. You you like it? Hemodynamically, the ECG looks great. 93 years old, no gradient whatsoever, and we have no AR whatsoever. At least according to hemodynamics, you see the blue line is perfectly flat. So I think nothing that could be better. And his blood pressure rose from 110 to 160, which will now be lowered. And this is typical for these patients that they then have higher blood pressure. So and the QRS complex is small, small, as you can see here. Um, so we achieved the goal uh, of, uh, of a high implant, uh, a good implant with, with a good result. Yeah, we'll, we'll share with you now, if we have time left, we'll share with you an aortography uh, to see that we really have no AR uh, left and we will also close here with a modern Manta system. Uh, so we have not used proglides or proclose. So we used here a Manta ceiling for this uh, old gentleman, which means that after four to five hours he will be mobilized already. 
So, is so Sheila, are you is using Manta or? We're using Manta using in this case. Cluster? We're using Manta in this case. Is, so is this that patient. You, is, is that what you do routinely? It, we do it routinely in one fourth to one third of the cases. It's of course a little bit more expensive, but we've seen that to use it in stents and other situations. So here we have a look. Perfect. It looks perfect. It's very good. A late shot, mild, but the otherwise perfect. I think this will seal nicely. So, so we have. I think it's important, like, you know, there's, yeah. there's a little bit of AR, but again, I see. Yeah. Your dynamic tracings look great. He's 93. I, I, Absolutely. I expect a lot of that to get better over time. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, and we I know think, that the nitinol gets warmer and yeah. actually we see that over time. So, so we're fast nowadays, but if we wait 10 more minutes or yeah. 20 minutes, uh, actually the AR air. goes away. So, so if we have a late discharge echo, there's no AR. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it's always good to. And, and uh, I, th I think your point about looking at the hemodynamics is an important one, right? So yeah. his EDP is flat, it's low. So in terms of what's going to matter for him, th yeah. this is nothing, and this will get better. Yeah. Okay, he wants to get up already because he feels well, and we just close now the the groin so that he can move out of the R, as he is. Uh, huh? Can I ask a question? Yes. Yeah, it's kind of I think we have a question here from. Yeah. We'll, we just show ahead. you the commercial alignment, perhaps, in two planes. Okay. Huh? Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So we see projection of the left coronary here, the LAO cranium, and see that you see the CTAF. Uh, and the left main is. So I think the commercial alignment is, is perfect here in this case, yeah. as, as projected. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you can nicely see it from the marker. So, and also you see coronary access after his left main intervention is also very nice. So we have a good rotational space. The cusp is large uh, and access will be, will be there. So, so, so I think uh, overall we, we're talking about a gentleman that even under German conditions, has exceeded the normal lifespan of a male person in the German cohort already by 15 years. Uh, so he is most likely to have at the age of 90 to 93 to have an accepted lifespan of another four years, three to four years with this age group uh, in Germany. So, so I think this is also a message from the geriatricians and it's important that these patients keep mobile and that they can have their everyday life back without having symptoms. Eberhard. Yeah. The pressure is coming down uh, to 150, 140, mm -hmm. which That's is good. Great. So I think we have one question here from uh, Sanjay. Go ahead. So, yeah. Thank you. That was a wonderful case. My question is that when you do a right cuspal overlap view, right, for example, in an RAO cordy, how do you confirm the frame alignment that you need to look at the frame also? How do you decide that your other side of the frame is not above the annular level? And is that a concern? And because see, we are learning. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. Actually, this has been shown. If you do the, if you do the, the right and the left, you're talking about the overlap, right? So uh, he's, I think the Sunday's asking the question, about, you know, you went from uh, RAO to LAO and the LAO is to confirm the, the position of the other yeah. cusp. So, yeah. right. Yeah, no, that's correct. Also that you the lower end of the valve, if it is not aligned, it's oh, not. Oh, right. This parallax, yeah. right. Parallax. Yeah. How do you make sure that the other side of the valve is below the annular level? So what's your method of confirming that when you're going from RAO, do you look at the co planner in between or you go from RAO to RAO? Yeah, that's what he did actually. That's what exactly. he did. He, he changed from RAO to, co to LAO to make sure that this is a, that, that the valve is really subannular. Right. That's what that's he did. The, and and this RAO was and that was the yeah. LAO for confirmation. Exactly. So, so yeah. we did this before release, as you see, and the distances were not that high because we were coming from an almost AP caudal 30 uh, to a 1515 LAO caudal. So, so this is why uh, it was not as apparent, but, but I think that's an important move and it's always checked in both planes. Right. Yeah.
So I have more questions you pass you, over. You, you don't have access on the other side at all. Months, so is yeah. that your technique? You do yes, two, yeah. two access less, points. On less the right. access points. Yeah. So you see, we have only access. So there's only a four French, very small safety line in, just to have a wire in order if something happens to the vessel. We can always uh, support the stand situation or uh, also an occlusion balloon if we had to. But it's a puncture on the same side, no crossover. Uh, also, no second groin being involved. This means less bleeding complications in the very elderly. So we have only one leg involved. So you can concentrate your pressure bandage on this side for a shorter time. And the second thing will be a TR band on the radial approach. So this yeah. means minimum hematoma, minimum vessel damage, and best outcome on vascular complications. That's great. And uh, that's a nice, nice technique there. And so you, you'll do an angiogram uh, after the manta? Or yes. Yeah. yeah, you will see yeah. that. Yes, absolutely. So you'll get and the second access port is also for the control. So we control uh, with a groin uh, vascular uh, angio, we control all punctures and all closures. So you will be able to see that there is no blood uh, leaving the vessel. OK, so we have a height of three plus one for the manta system that will now deploy and you'll nicely see the platinum marker and you see here uh, the system going in. We have now the Manta system, which uh, Henrik Trader uh, is putting on the wire. Can we see that? Oh, there we go. Yeah. So for, the, for those that, that are not familiar, could you briefly describe the Manta? Is it just an angioseal type of device or? It's, it is an angioseal type of device where we have a folded pledget actually that supports with a single device, a full closure. And what is very nice is that you can even puncture bypasses or stents and fully close them, which is not possible with the Proglide system. So this is something that we would put on pericardial bypasses and other types uh, of stents in the groin if there has been a vascular intervention. And we also do this if the patient is calcified and actually the Manta system doesn't need a needle engagement, but comes directly from the vessel has a folded pledget, goes back, and it supports much larger volumes than the other possibility, which is a combination of a proglide and an angioseal 8F. So you see, it's a single situation. We have full control where the wire in, if there's no bleeding, we take the wire out, but we can have the wire in for support until the last moment. And you can see there's no bleeding whatsoever. Very nice groin, and he will be able to walk tomorrow. That's See, great. we put the wire out. It's yeah. great. No bleeding. Very controlled. And it's a one minute closure situation. We can also show if you like the, yeah. Uh, yeah. the final angiography. We, we show you the angio of the groin. So we go in, in an REO 30 projection for it as we use the right groin. Ich mag gehen auf Gefäße, oder? Ja, zwei Bilder, ja? Ja, mal. Super. Die Gunde, wir sind schon drin. Zwei Bilder ist. Where is the... Okay, we're ready. Soll ich nach Kontrast gehen? Bei ja, gerne. Ein bisschen kleiner. Sekunde. Das ist ein bisschen groß. We just inject. Okay. I give a little bit of a four, but yeah. I open. Uh, guck mal, hope to. Uh, I ah, yeah, okay. <laughs> so good. Okay, there okay. we are. Okay. Ready, set, set, go. And you see, very nice. Good closure. Perfect. Yeah? That's Perfect great. closure, that's... no impairment, no vessel diameter change, no stenosis. So I think that's also a very important point. Yeah. And our vascular surgeons in Henrik's department really like it. Yeah, we, have, we keep on using it also for other yeah. surgical indications. Yeah. So, yeah, for many things. The, it's, it's it goes up device. to 18 French you can close or even bigger? Yeah, it's, it's, it's 18 to 20 French. And you see, this is, this is the system, yeah. single approach. You just have to know the depth of your, of your vascular system, so to the, uh, to the skin level. There are two sizes. There's a 14 yeah. French size and an 18 French size. And this is the larger one which we used, which uh, seals, holds all, up to 20, 21. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it goes to 20, up to 20. It's officially 18. Wonderful. I think our oh, time uh, is over, Martin. Sushil. Yeah, Martin, uh, Hendrik, Stefan, Eberhard, I really want to thank you for a great demonstration, a great case. Uh, it, it illustrated a lot of key points. Uh, and, you know, whether it's low risk or high risk, the, the procedure uh, technique is, is the same. And I think 
whatever it is, you, uh, I think Saurabh said it earlier, you, you need to get optimal result and, and uh, this is a great case in, in this patient. Thank you so thank much. You very much thank, thank you very much, Sushil. Thank you, Sushil. Thank you. On a per- Best greetings to India. Thank you. Yeah, on, on a personal Sushil. matter, Sushil, um, I have to give a lecture in, uh, in about three hours, so I'm driving back. Yeah. I hope I'm going to arrive on time, okay? Okay, we'll, we'll accommodate. No worries. Take care. Everyone. Okay, Appreciate you take one care. Minute, one minute. Thanks to your team as well. Yeah, one minute. minute. Thanks, thanks a lot. One minute. Uh, what we were yeah. done this time is, sir, because in the Zoom platforms, we were seeing in a very small thing, small windows. Uh, you are actually seen like Amitabh Bachchan now for our country now because it's projected <laughs> on the big screen uh, in the PVR cinemas and all of them could appreciate the details which you showed in a better way because all the entire proceedings is streamed on the bigger screens across 10 hubs in the country. So thanks for joining. Uh, yeah. One, one of the things, know. one of the things we did differently this year is they uh, created regional cities, rented uh, movie theaters uh, and uh, people gathered to, for the, for the meeting. So thanks again. And, uh, Thank All you. of you are on, on the big screen, movie stars. Thank no, you. you always been. Uh, uh, Stefan doesn't need colored the big specs. screen. <laughs> Dr. Gruber, right. with color specs, uh, looks like a hero anyway. Yeah. So he, Take care. Thanks, thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 I think we'll go that to the... That was a rock, rock star performance. Yes. Thank you.